Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a like, by leaving a comment, by leaving multiple comments, or by subscribing if you have not already done so. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, the cryptocurrency market is looking pretty gosh darn good. Bitcoin continues... To move up higher in price, it hit $52,000 just a couple of hours ago. The other coin that's really in the news, and I mean like everyone's actually talking about it all over the place, is uh, Shiba Inu coin. Shiba Inu has surged by more than 200% in the last day and a half or something like that. I think we spoke a little bit about this yesterday as far as, as to the why. Um, it appears... As if that um, people think that it's because Elon Musk tweeted a photo of his Shiba Inu. However, I don't think that's explicitly it. Like for those of you who haven't been paying attention to the actual Shiba Inu project, they are doing actual things. They have their own like decks. They have their own swap. They have all these different things that they actually have going on behind the scenes. Is there a coin burn? I don't exactly know, but I know the project is extremely popular. One would have assumed if Elon Musk was talking about a, a Shiba Inu um is the microphone lowering itself? I can't actually tell. I guess we'll find out in about, about a minute. Um, that we would have assumed that Dogecoin would have been the coin that was actually going up in price. But alas, it was Shiba Inu. So uh, Bitcoin hit 52000 The rest of the market kind of moved up as well. In a really weird um, sequence of events, Ethereum and Bitcoin moved up. Many other coins stayed in the red or did not move at all, which is very, very odd because you would assume that they would follow the same exact price movement as they have before but alas yeah so bitcoin moved back a tiny bit it's at 50 something other or a thousand now uh and of course a lot of the news that we're getting as well for price stuff is that bitcoin looks like it's going to try and hit 55,000, obviously and then go back to the sixty-five thousand dollars that we saw just a couple of months ago yeah that's all the price news there was a lot of lot a lot a lot of shiba inu news uh but the news basically is the price jumped um the 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 myth or the legend for Shiba Inu is that at some point it's going to hit one cent. So I guess until we get to there, uh, that's going to continue to be in the news. Anyway, that's all the price news. And yeah, let's move on. In one of the most popular news stories of the day, I'm not exactly sure why it's so popular, but we'll get into that in a second. It says US SEC Commissioner Head Gary Gensler has confirmed that his agency does not have the authority or intention to ban cryptocurrencies. The head of the U.S. SEC, Gary Gensler, has confirmed that his agency does not have the authority or intention to ban crypto. While responding to questions during an October 5th House Committee on Financial Services hearing, the SEC chief emphasized that prohibiting crypto does not fall within the SEC's mandate, stating that would be up to Congress. He said it's a matter of how we get this field within the investor consumer protection that we have and also working with bank regulators and others. How do we ensure that the Treasury Department has its has it within its AML tax compliance? Many of these tokens do not meet the test of being an investment contract or a note or a security. He emphasized he said emphasizing the need to bring crypto within the investor protection limit of the SEC. Good job. Gensler also noted the financial stability issues that stablecoins could raise as a priority for the agency. For those of you who weren't here, I'm sure this has been no more than a, a week at this point. Uh, there was the news that China had re 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 banned crypto. Everyone lost their minds. Prices began to drop for some reason. I was like, you can't reban something that's already banned. You you know, you can't bring it back and then um, and then everyone was like, oh, no, could the U.S. do the exact same thing? And then we had that also conversation together where I was like, no. Once again, if you've never lived in the States or don't know the States, um, if they want it banned, it's gone. There's really no discussion. They they will say that they left it up for public discussion or, you know, they took them a couple of months. No, it's just kind of gone. I've assumed for a very long time that the amount of big money that's actually in the market has solidified years ago that there will be no cryptocurrency ban in the United States. My opinion, but you kind of get what I'm talking about. When big money's really in the picture, it's because they know and have told other people, leave it alone. We're going to do what we want so we can make money from it. The other part was is that a couple days after the entire China thing came out, the SEC, uh, someone during a something committee uh, spoke to Gary Gensler, the guy in that photo right here, and was like, hey, 
do you plan on banning crypto? And he's like, no, we have no intention of banning Bitcoin. And for some reason that day, Bitcoin's price also rose by 6%. And I'm like, first of all, they can't do that. It would have already been done if it was going to be done. But now the 2.0 of the news is that once again, someone asked him that question. He said no once again. And I have a very strange, ridiculous feeling that that was also part of the reason why Bitcoin also rose in price over the last day or so. So, yeah, um, very popular news. It says the SEC has no plans to follow China and ban Bitcoin because they can't. U.S. will not follow China's authoritative crypto ban, says SEC. He didn't, he didn't say any of that. But I always uh, find it interesting how uh, people write the titles of their articles because, you know, he, he didn't say any of those words. He said, no, they, they, they don't even have the authority to do so. Like they're desperate to try and make sure that certain coins are security so that the SEC can have some type of jurisdiction within the space. Also really interesting to know, I don't know if you uh, heard it as I was reading out his quote, where he said, we already know that some of these coins are not securities. And I wonder which ones those are, because as of now, we only know that there's two coins that have been deemed not securities by the SEC, but I'm pretty sure they've done a thorough test, sure of it. Uh, and they know exactly which coins are not securities, but they're being very hush hush, because they want to maintain and control. Anyway, that's the SEC news. I mean, it was all over the place. I no matter. I mean, this is only three tabs as well. Like, I, I really couldn't get away from it uh, because I, I saw the news the first time in one tab or rather in one news story. And I was like, oh, you know, nah. I, I thought it was like a, a late news story from last week. Nope. Super popular. Everyone's super hyped once again because the SEC is not going to do what they can't do in the first place. And without further ado, let's move on. Also, in wow, this was more popular than I assumed it would be news. AMC Theaters announced that it now accepts Dogecoin, among other selected cryptocurrencies, as a payment option for its digital gift cards. AMC CEO Adam Aaron took to Twitter to share the news, saying you can buy AMC Theaters digital gift cards up to $200 per day with Doggy Coin and other cryptocurrencies using a BitPay wallet. And there's a tweet for it right there. There's the Doge. There's a B, I assume, for Bitcoin and popcorn tickets. Uh, yeah, this is also one of the most popular news stories of the day. A lot of people were losing their mind for this. I actually did not check to see if uh, Dogecoin's price has gone up. Uh, so apparently they have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bcash, Litecoin, and now Doggycoin uh, for the gift cards. Sure. Why not? I'm sure somebody's going to do this. I'm sure somebody has already done this and given a gift card to one of their friends, family members, or spouses so that they can go see some cool, awesome new action movies. Like the movies are actually coming back now, which is pretty nice. I've uh, been to the movies a couple of times. Anyway, yeah. So Dogecoin is now part of the AMC tribe. I don't, I don't know what word to use there. We had news about a week and a half ago that they were thinking of accepting Dogecoin. Everyone was like, oh, I can't wait. And then now it's here. So let's see if people actually spend their Dogecoin to buy um, digital movie tickets. And without further ado, oh, also, 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 tying directly into this. Bit Plaza, it says the company, I don't know why they wrote that. A holding company of a leading global Bitcoin shopping platform announced its support for Dogecoin on BitPlaza iOS and Android apps. BitPlaza customers can spend Doge on all of the products on the app in all supported regions, the Bit Plaza, the Bit Plaza, okay, is a giant global shopping app. Never heard of it. Available on both Apple and Google Play. The shopping platform has an immense number of products and categories to choose from. You can find all the latest tech, brand new electronics, gadgets, tools, and even groceries. Has anyone ever heard of Bit Plaza? If you've heard of Bit Plaza or have used Bit Plaza, please tell other people that Bit Plaza is actually good or a real thing because uh, I've never heard of this. But cool. So yeah, that also ties into the Dogecoin news as well. Really weird, right? All the all the Dogecoin. Not not that it's weird that Dogecoin is being accepted. It's more that the tons of Dogecoin acceptance news and Shiba Inu goes up by two hundred percent. What a weird market to be in. Anyway, now let's actually move on because that was the. Doggy coin news. Next up, and of course, this is also very popular. It's a very, it's a very, it's a very popular day, dare I say, in the cryptocurrency space. 
the Cardano network may be undervalued. What? When compared to its competitors, according to a new report published by leading digital asset manager Grayscale Investments, the report found that the market did not keep up with Cardano's significant growth over the last 12 months. Cardano launched smart contracts after successfully deploying the Alonzo hard fork on its network in September. The rollout allowed the network to host decentralized applications that can offer decentralized financial services, games, and more. Smart contracts help Cardano compete with Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain, amongst others. Grayscale's report notes that the Cardano network has settled more payment value per unit than its direct competitors, noting it settled over... That's a lot of money. Noting it settled over $1.6 trillion in total on-chain on chain transactions over the last 12 months alone. In comparison, Bitcoin has done $3.1 trillion in on-chain transactions. Why do I keep saying on-chain? While Ethereum has settled $2.8 trillion. These are all huge numbers. Don't let the, don't let the T fool you. Um, I think it was only a year or two ago that Bitcoin finally passed by one trillion over the course of a year and that was like major like a, a, a trillion dollars just passing through any cryptocurrency back and forth especially one that's decentralized and is not ruled over by any sec or abc is absolutely monstrous so even the fact that cardano and i and, and i and i say even the fact that as far as a Cardano is well known within the cryptocurrency space, but it's not that well known outside of the scene. If you talk to other people, you know, who are just getting into cryptocurrency, if they know about cryptocurrency, they usually always say it's always Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Ethereum. And I know most people can't even pronounce Ethereum. I've had people say Ethereum before to me, so I really know that they're not in the market. But 1.6 trillion is absolutely insane. In Grayscale's chart, Cardano's recent acceleration is clear. And maybe related to the Alonzo hard... For, oh, yeah, there we go. That makes a lot of sense. It, you know, it's clear uptick right there. So, yeah. Um, this was also, of course, very popular news. There were a lot of charts and stuff talking about it, and everyone was going completely insane. I think, there's, I, I think Cardano has a very good price appreciation ahead of it. I think I really do think that a large part of the reason why the market in general has kind of lagged has really been because of Bitcoin. We've seen over the last six, seven months, multiple times, whenever there were multiple altcoins that were really trying to spike up, they'd go up by 12%. Remember the really weird days where everything else was going up except for Bitcoin and Bitcoin would slam, like, I mean, like a straight line down and every other thing in the market also had to follow. So I think a lot of the prices have been suppressed uh, by Bitcoin whales because they know that all it takes is a huge sell-off to be able to move Bitcoin's price down. People sell off, they can buy for a cheaper price and the altcoins also fall back down as well. But I, you know, the the fact that Ethereum has had all these upgrades because e Ethereum's price hit very high before we even had any of the two or three upgrades that we've had since then. And we still have not re-reached that high. Same exact thing with Cardano. Cardano's price has gone, you know, relatively high, but like we have things that actually, we know that Cardano is faster and cheaper than Ethereum, especially at the current moment. So uh, it does feel a bit undervalued, but I guess only time will tell how the market is actually valuing it. Anyway, very popular news. Yeah, I guess that's about it. And let's move on. Also in the news now, just about once a week or so, the Lightning Network, Bitcoin's layer two scaling solution for fast and cheap Bitcoin payments, now houses over 3,000 Bitcoin and more than 77,000 channels. I think I explained that a bit before. For, and I know for those of you who do know, just put your headphones in or go look at the wall or something like that. A lot of other people have no idea how the Lightning Network works. Basically why there are 3,000 Bitcoin and 77,000 channels. Um, you can take some of Bitcoin that you have. So let's say you have half a Bitcoin, throwing out a number. And you decide that you want to use 0 0.10, so a tenth of a full Bitcoin on the Lightning Network. You can then make 10 different channels with that tenth of a Bitcoin. You can do whatever you want, actually. But for you know, argument's sake, you put 0 0.01 in each individual channel. So you yourself have now 10 different channels on the Lightning Network. The idea is that every time that someone makes a payment, if you know, if 0 0.01 Bitcoin, let's say 50,000, 5,500, sure. Every single payment that goes through that's around $500 or less because of your 0 0.01 Bitcoin can pass through your network. That's kind of how it works. It's kind of a little weird how they made the Lightning Network, but so you yourself would have 10 different channels that can each have $500 worth of Bitcoin or less passing through it. Every time a transaction goes through it, 
Uh, you get a transaction fee for it, and it's around one Satoshi. The idea is, especially when this was first proposed many moons ago, is that if you have 100 channels throwing it out there, uh, and at some point Bitcoin does reach dollar parity per Satoshi, well, basically you'd be getting you know, a dollar per transaction that's going through. And the idea is if the entire world is using the Lightning Network, when they, therefore you're making 5,000 per day. It's kind of the idea. I got a bit far, but you kind of understand. So this is why you can have 3,000 Bitcoin hyper-fractionalized to make multiple smaller channels. Everyone got it? Cool. The network's Bitcoin capacity has more than doubled since June when it crossed by 1,500 Bitcoin, which we were also talking about as well, because I think before that it was around 800 for a very, very long time. Like it just wasn't kind of growing. Fueled by a growing awareness after El Salvador enacted the Bitcoin legal tender law, Lightning has been seeing a steep increase in activity in terms of channel number and Bitcoin capacity as well. The number of Bitcoin being held in Lightning channels has nearly tripled since the beginning of this year. This is absolutely crazy. This is what I was expecting. I thought this would have happened two years ago when we started getting news about the NASDAQ and all the other people getting into the cryptocurrency space. But alas, it's here right now. Very exciting because this actually means that we can use Bitcoin as a payment option. We know the Lightning Network works. We have an entire country who's actually using an app that they use Lightning Network on. So all it takes is, you know, more Bitcoin being locked inside of it. I don't even think, I, I think we probably maybe worldwide maybe need 50,000, maybe 100,000 Bitcoin just inside the Lightning Network. We'd have a, an enormous amount of channels. And if they have like an easy to use app or an actual dApp that people can have on their phones, you'd be able to use Bitcoin with a one Satoshi fee, which is like one, one thousandth of one cent. I think it's even less than that right now. So actually quite fascinating to see how, how much this is growing. I'm going to assume over the next couple of months, we are going to see a, a 4,000 Bitcoin, 5,000 that kind of continues from there. But this is going to be it. This is how you use Bitcoin as a payment option on another layer. Yeah. Let's move on. And to finish things off, also in very popular news day, U.S. Bank. It's literally called U.S. Bank. The fifth largest retail bank in the United States announced on Tuesday that it is launching a cryptocurrency custody service for institutional rich people, uh, potentially setting the stage for wider mainstream acceptance of digital assets. As CNBC reported, U.S. Bank has partnered with New York Digital Investment Group, or New York DIG, to provide digital custody services for Bitcoin, Bcash, and Litecoin. I don't know why Ethereum is not there, but sure, why not? Gunjan Kaida, a senior executive at U.S. Bank's Wealth Management and Investment Division, told CNBC that support for other cryptocurrencies, there we go, like Ether, will be rolled out over time. Fund managers and other institutional investors have been increasing their exposure to cryptocurrencies for most of the year. The partner participation, wrong word, has grown significantly since May last, last year, Bitcoin's having, which triggered renewed bullish sentiment for the leading digital asset and by extension, the broader cryptocurrency market as well. So I think we, I remember saying the term the fifth largest US bank before. Well, I guess not. The fifth largest U.S. bank is now into crypto, I guess, openly. Uh, custody service, sure, why not? Custody is, you know, done by, I uh, almost said Instagram. It's done by Coinbase and by Kraken and by all, the, you know, so they, they all do the exact same thing. But the idea is if you are a bank and you want to remain relevant, you have to start offering these cryptocurrency services. You have to offer smart contracts. You have to merge with Ethereum. You have to do all these other things. So Cool. Hope it works out for them. Um, I assume people will be rushing to them for this. But once again, it says institutional investors. So that means, you know, the, the creme de la creme, the, the richest of the rich, which is really a shame. And I told you this was going to happen years ago as well. We were going to have a situation where crypto became super accepted, but only for the rich. So the rich are buying up as much as they possibly want or can. They're, you know, hiding it away, custodying it, yada, yada, yada. And then eventually... When there's only scraps left, this is what I believe, that's when they'll other banks will start offering it to retail people, normal people, and say, hey, you also want some Bitcoin? We have uh, you, 500 Satoshis if you want. You know, it's, it's kind of expensive, but I think, you, you, know, it's, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see as time goes on because it's definitely going to happen. Anyway, yeah, also super popular news. Banking giant U.S. Bank launches custody services for Bitcoin, fifth largest U.S. retail bank to launch Bitcoin custody service. That's a huge tower. They have a tower? All right. 
And fifth largest bank in the U.S. launches Bitcoin and custody service. Fantastic. And I forgot it once again. Hold on. Just give me a second. Wait, hold on. Oh, gosh, I have so many text messages. Go away. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay, hold, okay, okay. All right. Thank you for those of you who stayed here as I, like, look down at my phone and just talk to myself. It means a lot. <laughs> as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University. And let's move on. Chris, Hakeem Williams, Empire Queen, Stake It With Valor, Fudd, Wiser, Mortified, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealer's Den, Red Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, Cat the Something in the Z-Way, Lay Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobarazi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd, 21, Miguel Grolay, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones, Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Patronoster, Conan, Don't Skip, Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik, Banan, Auspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila, Jeez Louise, 76%, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, it's number, wow, okay, stop, 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 okay, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Abibiophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasic, Mohamaroni, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold League 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mange, Yelavori, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch Test, Every Day, and Kyle's Good Leg Day. Yes to Crypto, Buddy McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bostos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Hello out there to you. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who is a, a liker or a subscriber or a commentator. Commenter. Commenter. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Jeez Louise, that was a lot. At the moment, Bitcoin is at 51,297 US dollars. It is up by 2.43%. Here's the 52, oh, okay. 52,000 right there. Uh, there was a drop two hours ago and the other coins really reacted quite heavily they're all in the red right now except for doggy 5.4 uh, percent at the moment there's nothing once again stopping us from hitting 52 53 54 65 thousand dollars and i hopefully sometime this week we will pass by the one trillion dollar market cap for bitcoin again i assume it's going to happen i assume there will be a slight pullback because if people get afraid when it gets too cloudy i don't, I don't know what's really going on out there Dogecoin is up by 4.9%. Yeah, see, every, this, this drop that Bitcoin had for some reason slammed, I mean, terrified. Like some of the coins are down by 8, 9%, 10%. Kind of weird. Shiba Inu is coin number 20. That's really impressive. I think this coin was like number 55, like a couple of days ago or something like that. That's, that's, that's really insane. Currently up by 71%. I, I can't even say that number. 0000023 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, uh, per coin. Tezos, yeah, everything is relatively in the red. That's what I was saying. I said it's really weird because Bitcoin was pumping. And typically, whenever Bitcoin goes up, all the other coins tend to kind of, you know, muscle their way past it and have like higher numbers. But guess not today. Yeah. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be on this wacky, wacky planet. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. S see you. <laughs>